So you're thinking about doing your first project boat. You're nervous. Maybe you're a little intimidated by biting off more than you can chew. Hi friends and welcome to this episode of DIY Waterworld. In this video, we are doing the ultimate beginner's build. You guys are used to my crazy builds where I do wild off the wall stuff that you probably might be a little bit intimidated by trying. Well, this boat build is for you. I have less than $1,000 into this, including purchasing and building this boat. This is for a beginner level builder or advanced, showing you that if you just focus on simplicity, repurposing, putting some sweat equity into your project, you can end up with a pretty cool project. And well, let's build. <laughs> So where I'm at, everything on this boat is super solid. I'm actually kind of mind blown. So this boat is called a Riviera. And let me tell you what, they are so overbuilt. The thickness in this glass. I mean, this thing, it has to be half an inch thick of solid glass. I mean, all throughout the boat, it's mega solid. Um, Look at uh, this thickness here. So the floor is super solid up until this point, basically. Um, you know, you have holes here where the console was mounted. That's always a way for water to intrude, especially a wood deck like this. But this is a really simple deck. Um, it just lays on top of a main stringer going down the middle. So all I'm gonna do here is I think I'm just gonna cut out the front section what's a little bit soft and just keep chasing <laughs> chasing the rotted wood until I get to dry strong wood. Um, I'm hoping I don't go too far with it, but um, you know, for peace of mind, it'll be nice to know that the floor's um, not water saturated, not weighing a ton, because I don't want a super heavy boat. This had a 48 horsepower on it. I'm gonna try to get away with a uh, one of the, the smaller two-cylinder 25 to 35 motors, keep it real simple. So um, I think for the intention of building this, like two people to run around, it'll be perfect. So I'm going to start cutting. So there's a little access spot. I want to show you underneath. Hopefully the light can pick it up. So what I'm going to do is just sm start with a small cut. And then I'll be able to really get an idea for, you know, I don't want to go too far. I don't want to damage anything. So I'm going to cut out a small section and that's going to give me an idea. I'm pretty sure that this floor is not bonded to the stringer. So um, I want to make sure I don't damage the stringer if it's good. I'm pretty sure that the stringer is solid. Um, I don't want to cut into anything I don't need to. So little bits at a time. That's my goal. see is what I can access. Can I get this piece here? Yeah, look at that. It's all rotted, which we knew. And then I got to some good wood. A little bit of rot. You can see where they screwed the deck down before they glassed it. Kaka. So got some rod on the side here. So I'm gonna keep coming, keep coming back a little bit more and then come out a little bit. That should be good. All right, so I think I've gotten to the stopping point for cutting. Like this, this is all dry. So, 
pretty much, I mean, you could tell by just walking around what was soft, what wasn't. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is just take these cuts a little bit farther towards the edge and uh, gotta see how much clearance there is in there. And make sure that when I'm cutting, I don't obviously damage the bottom of the holes. Probably get a circular saw and just set the depth to be just barely more than the thickness of this material. Um, So I got the new power head on. Um, I tested it last night. I've got spark. So this morning I took a carburetor apart, uh, rebuilt it, let it soak for a couple hours in a solution. And yeah, I've got it back together. I'm getting ready to do the first, first fire up on it. Um, I got my fuel set up, filling up my water tank. This is going to be electric start. So I'm going to, uh, I needed this bracket on because it holds the throttle linkage and timing rod. So let's see how it goes. Alright, so I got the motor mounted, got to do a couple little things, I just want to run it the way it is, super simple, super light, um, so I'm going to hook up the throttle control, uh, shift throttle control, and then rig some sort of a, just steering handle on it, so that's what we're doing. One of the great things about being a hoarder is that in all the project boats I get, and anytime I get a chance that there's something that's being junked, I'm always trying to strip things. Um, never have a shortage. Stainless. Stainless is super expensive now. Any chance I get to get free stainless, I'm doing it. One of the things I love about these old OMCs is how easy it is to hook controls up. Literally, boom, you can undo this that fast. Whoop. So I'm debating a couple things for tiller handle and I think this is gonna work. Right there, boom. All right, so here it is, getting ready for the test run. Um, get my tiller set up. Let me get my tiller. Oh man, I need to get some rope. Well, I'll figure out this thing. Let's see what this thing does. I'm, oh, some dolphins. 
I bet they'll follow us. I'm gonna make a guesstimate. This is a strong motor. Like I've built a lot of these 35s, 25, 35s, and this one is strong. Um, I'm gonna go going 26 miles per hour. That's my guess. 26 miles per hour on the oven route, the 16 foot Riviera. Yeah, I'd like some more weight up front, but I think we're gonna be good. So, let's see how this works. This thing's a little crusher. Rides so good, you can tell with this V-hole and it being a solid, I mean, this is not a lightweight skiff. Um, this is definitely not, um, you know, your Carolina skiff. Uh, kind of like a Carolina skiff and finished, but the ride quality blows a Carolina skiff away. Um, this thing has got some pep, but it just crushes through the waves. I hammered into a couple good sized waves and it eats it right up, so. I'm gonna do GPS right now and see what this thing does top end. All right, so just on the GPS there, 27, 28 miles an hour. Uh, I think it's all 29 for a second, but um, that's with the bow down. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm trimmed. I'm all the way trimmed down. So I'm gonna trim up a notch I know it's gonna pick up another three, four miles an hour. Um, let's say, I bet we hit 30. All right, so I'm one pin up. Um, oh God. Steering's falling apart. I got some rope. We're fine. So here we go, trim to one position up. Let's give it a go. Definitely a difference getting on plane. Just gotta give it some gas. So, man, this thing is bad. So it still could be trimmed up even more, um, but for ride quality, that's probably a pretty good spot, um, being able to get into some waves. But if I really wanted to get more power, it's actually maxing out this prop. So I'm just... You can see too, uh, even when I dry fit the motor, just mounted it, the cavitation plate is probably 
inch and a half, two inches below the bottom of the transom. So that right there would free up. Um, just hit 30 miles an hour. I think 31, it briefly touched a couple times. Um, I mean, shoot. This is exactly what I wanted it to do. You know, for a under a thousand dollar boat, how can you go wrong? You know, I'm, I'm kind of sitting here in, in awe a little bit. So, you know, I know these motors are strong. I use them in a ton of projects, but the fact of the matter that this heavy boat, I mean, this boat is not light. To go 30 miles an hour, I know with the motor height adjustment, possibly a different prop, um, <laughs> to be well into the 30s, 32, 33 miles an hour is pretty impressive. Um, you know, I really wanted to find out whether it would work with the tiller style weight in the back of the boat, but this thing's balanced. I mean, it walking around, standing on the sides. I mean, it's got stability for sure. Um, even being up on the deck up here for fishing, it's got a really good feel to it. This boat is definitely solid. Um, so to have a solid boat and with this 35 horsepower motor be uh, going in the 30s is pretty nuts. I'm so impressed with this boat right now. This motor, let me tell you what, these motors are crushers. <laughs> Crazy. I can't wait to share with you what I'm gonna do to this boat. It just hit me on the way here from the boat ramp. What I'm gonna do, I think you guys are gonna like it. It follows in true DIY water world fashion. I wanted you to see what the finished product would look like. The boat is not completed yet. I'm gonna finish this up. I'm gonna rig it properly. But overall, I didn't wanna leave you without seeing pretty much what the boat's gonna look like. In the next video, part two, which will be the final part of this build, I'm gonna finish the rigging, take it on a fun trip. I'm gonna finish setting it up for kind of an all around fun boat. And then I'm probably gonna list it for sale. So keep an eye out for this boat. It will be for sale for a great deal, especially if you're a subscriber. I'd like to take this moment to thank you guys for watching this video. For those of you that have been watching for a while, you know how much I appreciate your comments and you being here and your love for the channel. Your comments, your likes, you guys are what motivate me to keep doing fun builds like this. So if there's anything you wanna see in future episodes, be sure to let me know and I will see you guys soon. Well, my friends, that concludes this video. Of course, I wanted to finish off with some footage of the boat. Kind of. It's, I partially put it together. Whoa!